Now we will view some of the hardware represented by the preceding circuit diagram. This is the amplifier and housing. The meter shown in the end of the housing is the local indicator for the measured process variable. It is an optional item. These are the zero and span adjustments. Here the 24 volt DC positive and negative terminals are shown. The four wires to the left are from the measuring cell. The test jack is for measuring the transmitter output. A local or remote indicator may be connected across meter terminals 10 and 11. Means are provided for the installation of a local plug-in type meter if desired. The upper metal link is connected from the center to the positive side of the meter terminals when a meter other than the plug-in type is used. This is terminal 9 to terminal 11. The link is connected from the center to the negative side of the meter terminals when either no meter or the plug-in type is used. This is terminal 9 to terminal 10. The lower link is normally connected from 3 to 7, as shown. It is connected from 7 to 4, if a reverse output is desired. This link is not used with a 5-wire sensor, such as is used in a rotary motion transducer. This schematic shows typical amplifier connections. The measuring cell wire color code and link arrangement are shown in the lower left chart, entitled Measuring Cell. The diode shown between terminals 10 and 11 protects the circuit when the local indicator is used. The meter, when used, operates below the barrier voltage of the diode and works normally. No current passes through the diode. If the meter opens up, the voltage across 10 and 11 immediately increases and surpasses the diode barrier voltage, causing it to conduct. This closes the circuit and the loop is back to normal. The zero and span will be found in this location on some transmitters. The total allowable signal wire resistance for a Veritrack transmitter can be determined from this graph. Locate the number 24 in the volts column on the left side of the graph. Follow the 24 volt line horizontally to the right until it intersects the shaded section. Then from the intersection downward to the bottom of the graph. The line crosses the ohm scale at 530 ohms. 530 ohms is the total allowable loop resistance for the 24 volt DC power supply. A Veritrack receiver contains 250 ohms of signal input resistance. This must be subtracted from the total of 530 ohms. Five hundred thirty minus two hundred fifty leaves two hundred eighty ohms allowable signal wire resistance. This is for a non intrinsically safe receiver. Five 
for an intrinsically safe loop, an additional 200 ohms is added to the receiver. 530 ohms minus 450 ohms leaves 80 ohms maximum for the signal wire resistance. Veritrack transmitters are suitable for use in hazardous areas such as National Electrical Code Class 1, Group C or D, Division 1 areas. However, for any transmitter to be intrinsically safe, all items in the loop must also be intrinsically safe. Now work exercise number six in your workbook. The Veritrack 56P transmitters are designed to measure gauge pressure. The model 56PL is for low ranges, the 56PM is for medium ranges, and the 56PH covers the high ranges. The ranges available for the 56PM are shown here. The two numbers give the minimum and maximum range for a given measuring head. For example, the 0 to 25 slant 100 PSIG assembly can be calibrated for a minimum span of 25 and a maximum span of 100 PSIG. A given measuring head will withstand a pressure one and a half times the upper range limit. Look at the second one, the 0 to 100 slant 400 PSIG line. The maximum pressure this measuring head assembly could withstand would be one and a half times 400 or 600 PSIG. This is an underside view of the 56 PM gauge pressure transmitter. One of the objectives of this lesson is to identify parts of the transmitter. The items are named and are self-explanatory. This is a cross-sectional view of the measuring head of the 56P Veritrack transmitter. It contains the measuring cell and the measuring diaphragm. This is the actual measuring head. The four wires connect to the amplifier section. In operation, Process pressure enters through the process connection 20. And is applied to the measuring diaphragm 18, causing the diaphragm to move. The distance the diaphragm moves is proportional to the applied pressure. The diaphragm button, 17, is moved by the diaphragm. The button movement is transferred through the body seal, 14. To the measuring cell cap, 13. The measuring cell cap, 13, is touching the movable end of the measuring cell spring, 11. And thus, as the measuring diaphragm 18 moves, the spring, 11, is compressed until the forces are equal.
the cell holder, 10, and the cell cap, 13, are so constructed that the spring cannot be over-compressed. The diaphragm support, 16, has a vent hole, 15, which allows the space between the measuring cell and body to breathe. Otherwise, there would be a buildup of back pressure in this space. The seal diaphragm, 5, and the body seal, 14, are provided to hermetically seal the measuring head body, 9. If overpressure should rupture the measuring diaphragm, 18, the body seal, 14, should be checked for damage. The header, 8, contains the wires that connect the measuring cell to the amplifier section. This is a schematic diagram of the measuring cell for the 56P gauge pressure transmitter. And another look at the measuring head, which contains the measuring cell. Locate the measuring diaphragm, the third item from the bottom right-hand side. Pressure on the diaphragm compresses the spring and moves the armature. This decreases the air gap in one transformer. and increases the air gap in the other. From here, the operation of the Veritrack 56P is identical to the 56DP model for differential pressure. This is the zero and span adjustment for the 56P. The Veritrack transmitters transmit a 4 to 20 milliampere DC signal and operate in series with the input module. The loop components are connected in parallel across the input module. A 1 to 5 volt signal is fed to the loop components from the input module. This concludes the component identification and principle of operation study of a specific electronic motion balance transmitter. Now work exercise number seven in your workbook.